Well, hello, glue troopers. Uh, doing a road build today of this 1965 Nito 1-75 to scale Fuji T1. Uh, the Fuji T1 was Japan's first swept wing jet design following the Second World War, and it was a trainer. And if I'm to believe what I read on Wikipedia, they built 66 of them. The first 40 had British engines and the last 26 with domestically made Japanese engines. By the way, the Fuji company was basically the old Nakajima company renamed. Uh, the aircraft did have a very long service life, I believe over 40 years before they retired the last one. Apparently a pretty competent design made for the Japanese needs. Now, this kit is, I'm just going to come out and say it, it's not a real good kit. I know it's a 1965 mold and pressing, and we have a lower standard expected of kits of that era than what we're used to today, but this one, even by 65 standards, left something to be designed. It did come in a cello bag, and they had a little catalog in there, one sheet paper catalog, and there was some pretty interesting stuff on it. Uh, I noticed that all the aircraft were military aircraft, which is kind of interesting because later on, Nito would actually be known as making almost exclusively airliner models, but I guess at this early point, they thought the military stuff would still sell. And they also had some a little bit of cars and stuff and this uh, little racetrack thing, sort of a model with fun value. But anyway, uh, once I uh, got the kit out and started looking at it, it, I realized it came with a stand and it came with a metal screw and a nut, which is used to put the stand together. And we'll talk a little, a little bit more about that later. But uh, everything else is pretty much a standard kit. Uh, there were three runner trees uh, for plastic parts and one acrylic tree for the stand and the glass components or clear components, which, by the way, the canopy was pretty foggy, but the rest of the stuff seemed to be, uh, the rest of the acrylic parts seemed to be reasonably clear. So uh, you have a basic decal sheet. This is for the uh, basic aluminum version of the airplane. Uh, some of the T1s were later painted white and orange with a rather elaborate paint scheme, but uh, most of the, at least in their earlier years, most of them were in uh, pretty much straight up aluminum skin with uh, glare shield and necessary Japanese national markings and aircraft identifiers. Pretty straightforward. That's probably the way I'll paint this one when I get it home. I do have to tell you that uh, there was a lot of flash uh, on a lot of parts, including both the acrylic and the plastic. Uh, the instructions sheet was just a one-sided sheet that had been rolled up like a scroll, and I couldn't get it to lay flat, so I had to do this so I could get a picture of it. And it's just one big exploded diagram. Again, kind of on par for a fairly basic kit in the 1960s. Uh, but be careful. There are, aside from the uh, what limited internal cockpit parts they have, it's easy to overlook that there's a splitter that goes inside the intake also. And uh, before you get to that, of course, you want to clean up some of this flash because uh, there was a lot of it on the uh, intake of the airplane. Now, of course, that may have just been this kit or it could be an issue with that mold. So there are no adjustment pins or excuse me, alignment pins on the wings. There's only two on the fuselage. So you're going to have to manually align most of the parts that uh, go together, such as the fuselage and the wings. Like I say, there are two alignment pins on the fuselage and none on the wings. So... You have to pre-build those. The flaps are separate and they're a very poor fit. I had to sand them down and it's uh, all in all the whole fuselage half section pretty low quality. I'm not really impressed. The, the overall shape looked okay but the alignment was terrible. Uh, the drop tanks that come with it are two-piece drop tanks and you can get the bottom half on backwards. They're, they only go together one way. You can put them in the wrong way and that leaves a gap in the rear. So if you want to make a detailed model, you're going to have to get your putty out. If you turn them around, you wind up with this jutting underjaw of the lower part sticking out in front. So there's that. Very low detail cockpit. It has to be trimmed a lot. It sits too high. If you put it together the way it says and just set it in the airplane, you won't be able to close the canopy. And but However, it does have a two-position canopy. The, the canopy, if you can get the flash off of it without ruining those very tiny little acrylic pins that are molded into it, you can have a canopy that you can raise and lower. Quite frankly, it fits, per, it fits pretty snugly. You could pretty much fit, friction fit it up or down. 
and it doesn't line up terribly well with the windshield. Uh, it's just, uh, it's going to take some play in to get that tight. But uh, it, again, like I say, you know, an inexpensive kit from the mid 1960s, it is what it is. Uh, the wheel doors do not fit at all. They're made for uh, posing the model gear down. If you want to pose it gear up, you might as well just go ahead and get some thin plastic or even putty and just putty in the very shallow uh, wheel wells. There's no wheel well of any kind for the nose gear. If you pose it down, you literally just glue the nose gear into the hole and then glue the doors beside it. There's no wheel well at all and very shallow in the wings. However, in the fuselage, it has these very large, weird, oversized doors that cannot be put together and close the fuselage the way the instruction sheet tells you to do it. I wound up having to basically break and cut off the doors from this big L-shaped piece, which I suppose is designed to give you some limited uh, interior, although there's no detail on it, but it does create a wall for the inside of the wheel well with the doors down and the way it goes in, it looks like it's designed to sort of be able to position either one of two ways, but it doesn't fit either way. It won't fit with the door closed. It won't fit the door open. The parts are simply too big. I wound up having to cut and shape the parts to get this mediocre fit that I did get, but that was the only way I could get the fuselage halves together. This thing kind of fought me all the way. If you're one of those people that wants to make a nice kit out of something challenging, this is this would be a good one because you can make a nice kit out of it. I mean, the shapes are correct enough that you can make a nice model, but you're going to work for it. It's going to fight you all the way because nothing really fits properly. So, uh, the as I mentioned, the, the canopy was cloudy. That could have just been age. But uh, you can pose it open or closed. So, that that's cool, which is kind of ironic given that there's so little detail in the uh, interior. But if you wanted to find yourself some sort of detail kit or detail it out, you know, if you're a master modeler, here, like I say, here's a challenge for you. Uh, when you get the when you look at the landing gear at first i thought that the round part were the wheel hubs but i realized those are just the injection tabs they have to be clipped off uh, so the landing gears also don't fit in the holes you're gonna have to either bore out the hole or trim down the the pin to go in but i'll probably be posing this gear up especially since it has a stand and uh, I left the crew out. I did fit them a couple of times to make sure I had the height right, but I'm leaving them out so I can detail them and then put them back in. The nice thing is, is you can detail the crew separately if you've already built the fuselage like I did because I'm doing a road build, and then they will insert back in. Uh, but there's no there's no alignment pins. Those are, those are just basically spacers. So you <laughs> just sort of fit them where you think is right. Very low detail crew uh, in cockpit, virtually no detail in the cockpit. Uh, the stand, this is kind of interesting. The stand says airplane, almost like the old uh, airplane movie poster. I was like, well, I've built a model airplane. But that makes sense in that they could probably just use the stand for any airplane model because uh, some of their other kits uh, are apparently come with a stand. So I was like, okay, I can go with that. It is an airplane. <laughs> and they have their name on there, uh, Nito Kagaku. Uh, incorporated, which I believe means uh, Nito Company. And uh, again, lots of flash, even on the acrylic parts. The stand did not fit at all The uh, where the two pieces go together in the screw. And we all know how much fun it is to trim down, you know, 55-year-old brittle acrylic. Um, let's see, this, this kit was made in 65, 35, 45, 55. 57 year old plastic Woo. but I did manage to do it with the few tools I had with me on the road uh, a little time a little patience I used a little uncharacteristic Max's models patience and I did get it to fit uh, when I get home I'll tighten it up a little bit but it is uh, a movable posable stand although or until I get it tightened up it kind of flops around a little bit but still um, there was a very poor fit by the way on the wings and the tail and I mean that was the worst fit getting the wings in was a challenge I had to do a lot of uh, trimming and scraping on both the fuselage and the uh, wing tab to, to get the wings in. And when they went in, they had anhedral of about four degrees, which isn't right. And when I put the tail feathers on, and it seems to have the same tail feather twice, so I just flipped one over. 
And they had, the jet does have some dihedral on the tail, but the model had a ridiculous amount. Fortunately, it just a, a little glue and a little pressure and a little patience, and it, it seems to have straightened out. And then I glued the uh, drop tanks on. I had missed the splitter in the nose. Fortunately, I was able to put that in afterwards. And uh, that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, it uh, is now done. Well, uh, it's packed up for road travel on the way home, I should say, when I say done, as far as I can go with it. Uh, so that's where we're at with that. It's a cool subject. I'll take it home to finish it. If you guys uh, ever want to build one of these, it'll make a great challenge. I think uh, you can make a nice presentation out of it, but it's going to take a lot of work. There's a lot of detail that's not there. There's no support strut for the uh, drop tank or the, the landing gear is pretty basic. doesn't have a lot of components. If you really want to go to the trouble, trouble of cutting out wheel wells and things, uh, putting a detailed cockpit, you'd have, you'd have, especially given the massive gaps this thing has, you'd really have a lot of work ahead of you. I'm not sure it'd be worth it. There are other companies that, a uh, couple of companies that have made uh, the T1. If you want to do a real nice job, you might want to go with one of them if you can find one. But if you're looking for a challenge uh, to hyper detail, then <laughs> this would definitely be a challenge. At least the basic shape looks right, and that's really what matters. You know, when I get done with it and put it up on the shelf on the Tarvis up on its stand, it's going to go with my other small scale aircraft I have up there just fine. And in, I'm sure I'll enjoy looking at it. And in the end, isn't that really all that matters? Well, guys, you take care of yourselves. And as always, model on.